Hey everybody, welcome back to Carry Trucker. I'm going to get ready to knock out a video here. I'm going to get some stuff wrote down. I've got... That's it I can get here. i got quite a bit of information on the Second Continental Congress. So I'm going to break that down and uh, get it condensed. I ain't going to go through every little bit of this. Uh, we've already did... The first Continental, I guess on camera here, let's see it go this way with it. I always did the first Continental Congress that took place 1774 to 1781. And then I did the Battle of Lexington and Concord. And now we're doing the second Continental Congress. Um, get some stuff wrote down here and we'll get this thing started. Hey everybody, and I'm back. Of course, you all didn't realize it, but had a little bit of a delay there. Um, got some got some back history uh, wrote down. Uh, we're going to go back and kind of cover a little bit about the First Continental Congress, a little bit about Lexington and Concord. Uh, brush up on them a little bit, and then I'll get into the uh, Second Continental Congress. Uh, instead of going through everything and writing, breaking it breaking everything down, writing everything out. Uh, we'll go over the uh, previous, like I said, the uh, First Continental Congress and a little bit on the uh, Lexington Concord, Battle of Lexington Concord. And then I'll jump on into uh, Second Continental Congress. Uh, I want to get this knocked out tonight. Uh, the First Continental Congress they adjourned on 26th of October, 1774. Uh, but delegates resolved to reconvene in May of 1775 if Parliament does not address their grievances. In London, parliamentary factions debate the merits of offering concessions to the colonies. Although the British Ministry takes no official notice of Congress petitions and addresses on 30th November 1774, the die is cast when King George III opens up Parliament with a speech condemning Massachusetts and the Suffolk's resolves. It is clear that Congress will need to meet again. War breaks out in Massachusetts on 19th April 1775, Battle of Lexington and Concord. Many delegates are already en route to Philadelphia, where Congress convenes on 10th of May, 1775. Notable additions to this are, meeting are, or include, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, and Lehman Hall, the lone delegate representing a single parish in Georgia. If you remember, the uh, First Continental Congress uh, did not have a representative from Georgia. In Massachusetts, the Provincial Congress formed when the military governor, Thomas Gage, he'd been brought up quite a bit in these videos, dissolved the legislature in 1774. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Thomas Gage dissolved the legislature in 1774 needs advice, arguing that General Gage hath actually levied war against them. Massachusetts patriots hope Congress will suggest a mechanism for creating a civil government to manage the colonies. So, more than one have pretty much determined that uh, war has already been declared. So, the reason I want to do some of this back stuff is we're we're in the we're in the heart of it now. Uh, Congress resolves to prepare for war, but continues to seek reconciliation. Unwilling to completely abandon their hope for peace, Congress extends an olive branch to the king through another petition. Approved in July 1775, William Penn carries the document to London. The king issues a proclamation on 23rd August, declaring America to be in a state of open and avowed rebellion. 
petitions and declarations stir up patriotic sentiment, but that alone will not win the war. Hoping to win Canada as an ally, and thereby eliminating a potential route for invasion for the British, Congress urges the opposed inhabitants of Canada to join the American cause and send delegates to Congress. Meanwhile, the Battle of Bunker Hill on 17th June 1775 forces many delegates to rethink their position on reconciliation. As accounts of the battle reach Philadelphia, Thomas Jefferson and John Dickinson are drafting the Declaration of the Causes and Necessity for Taking Up Arms. Something that definitely has to be done, thought out. Uh, a lot of thinking going into it is declaration of the causes and necessities for taking up arms. John Adams calls the document a spirited manifesto. Wonder how many. Uh, wonder how many groups have even thought about this today. On 14th June, Congress creates a Continental Army and appoints George Washington COC, Commander-in-Chief, or CIC, Commander-in-Chief, before sending Washington to Boston to meet the troops in July. It may sound kind of odd there, before sending Washington to Boston, before sending George Washington to Boston. To meet the troops in July, Congress adopts a comprehensive set of military regulations designed to marshal the troops. How will Congress pay for a new army? On the 22nd of June, 1775, it approves the first release of one million in bills of credit, paper currency, issued in defense of American liberty. Congress authorizes the printing of another one million in July. By the end of 1775, Congress will authorize a total of 6 million bills of credit. After a flurry of activity in June and July, Congress adjourns for the brief respite on the 2nd of August, 1775. Talking about those bills of credit, a lot of people don't realize you got that paper money in your hand. You got this stuff in your hand right here. All that is is a uh, is a credit. You've been issued credit. Um, originally, every bill was backed up by gold. Not so much anymore. That's why the economy sucks. stinks. When the body reconvenes on 13th September, three new delegates representing the entire colony of Georgia. Are present. As Congress continues to mobilize for war, delegates also debate the possibility of foreign assistance and the intricate and complicated subject of American trade. February 1776, Congress receives news of the Probationary Act, which subjects all American vessels to confiscation by the Royal Navy. In March 1776, Congress sends a message of its own to British shipping interests. Enemy vessels beware. Um, I may go back and do, do a little bit of research on that prohib, prohibitory act and uh, see if we want to do a video on it. Opposition to independence is steadily waning in Congress. Thanks in part to the popular support support Common Sense is published in Philadelphia in January 1776, offering simple facts, plain arguments, and common sense. The pamphlet is publishing success that stirs debate on the subject of independence. Uh, anybody my age, around my age or older, will know the term, the pamphlet, Common Sense. Uh, may have to do a video on that too for the younger generation. Throughout 1775 and 1776 many colonies from their own provincial congresses or conventions given their expanding roles in the face of war 
these bodies need more legal authority to be effective. As Massachusetts had done in 1775, individual colonies seek the advice of Congress. John Adams explains his own opinions on the divine science of politics and the most advantageous structure of government in the pamphlet Thought on Government on 10th of May 1776 1776, Congress passes a resolution allowing each colony to create a new provincial government. So, actual defining a separate government, a separate nation, uh, was passed allowing that to be come to by May 10th, 1776. On 15th of May, a pesky preamble is added to the measure. John Adams dutifully records the debate in his diary. We all know what the preamble is. Or should. We get to where I get up to the sign of the declaration. I will probably cover the preamble, um, amendments, stuff like that. Many delegates fear their actions, such as the creation of a new civil government and the search for potential foreign allies, are tantamount to declaring independence. By June, delegates will be considering a resolution on the matter of independence itself. Um, war started. We have started our independence. Um, comes around again. It's not really going to be a independence war revolution civil war we're on the heels of it people we're on the heels of it that's a big thing while I'm doing these videos um, we'll get the next we'll get into the next video we'll hopefully have it out next week uh, I'm on this new schedule so I hope to start knocking these out on a regular basis I appreciate you watching. We will catch you on the next video.